Berlin by Night by M. Riff Chapter 01, Berlin Topaz extended her phone to a passerby, an elderly lady adorned in a colorful scarf covering her head and shoulders. Speaking in English, she politely requested, Excuse me, madam. Would you mind taking a photo of us together? The lady accepted the phone and replied in English with a distinct Russian accent, Certainly, my dear. With a warm smile on her face, Topaz slipped her arm under Azer's, pulling him closer. Addressing the lady, she added, Could you please make sure to capture the trains in the background as well? The lady snapped several shots from different angles and handed back the phone. Topaz was occupied by typing in her phone screen when Azer extracted a professional journalist camera from his backpack and quickly aimed it at the elderly lady before she blended into the crowd. Amidst the sea of gray and dark winter attire worn by the surrounding crowd, the lady's Russian red scarf adorned with large flowers stood out. Azer managed to focus the camera on her while he also included the sign displaying Berlin Hauptbahnhof, just a few steps away. In the background, the arrangement of vertical and horizontal beams supporting the delicate glass dome of the roof resembled the coordinates of the Earth's globe. A quote from Professor Alba at Journalism College flashed through Azer's mind, focused journalists are the sharpshooters of peacetime. Satisfied with capturing the historical essence of the city in a single frame, Azer turned his gaze to Topaz and jubilantly exclaimed, I've got it. Topaz shifted her attention briefly to two young women further down, provocatively leaning against the railing to showcase their figures. Then, she faced Azer and reproachfully remarked, Really? With her Australian accent, she added, Stay composed. They're likely prostitutes. Though Azer looked at her, he opted not to explain his thoughts. He hoisted his backpack onto his shoulders, ready to continue the journey. Still immersed in her phone screen, Topaz inquired, How do you say, the central railway station, in German? Azer gestured towards a distant sign and answered, It's called, Hauptbahnhof. After a couple of failed attempts at copying it, she relinquished her phone to Azer, urging, Could you please type it here for me? Azer aimed the phone at the sign, took a photo, and handed it back, saying, just send this photo along with the others. Your friends can identify the location. Observing the photo, Topaz sarcastically remarked, You're quite clever. Why do you always extinguish my ideas with your practical solutions? I'm attempting to showcase that I've learned some German words since arriving in Europe. With a back-and-forth glance between the photo and her phone, she managed to input, Hauptbahnhof into her text message and press send. Grabbing her suitcase, she pulled it along and remarked, My friends in Australia are going to be so envious. Azer walked beside her and pointed out, That was the fifth or sixth message you've sent since we arrived. Topaz retorted, I've been staying in a Spanish coastal village ever since I got to Europe four months ago. My friends keep nagging me to share pictures from Paris, London, and Berlin instead of flooding them with sunrise and sunset photos by the sea. Now I finally have the chance to prove that I'm truly exploring Europe. Azer remarked, we're going to be here until tomorrow. You'll have plenty of opportunities to send as many photos as you like. With a touch of irritation, Topaz responded, no kidding. 24 hours to explore every corner of the major capital of the European Union. They had landed a few hours earlier after their flight. Right up until the last moment, they weren't sure if both would be able to make it onto the plane. Azer expressed his gratitude, Marita was kind to give me her ticket instead of going to her mom's birthday party. Topaz responded, let's not make it too dramatic. Most people her age would gladly give up a ticket to avoid a mom's birthday bash. She explained further, Marita told me her mom is a self-centered egomaniac. She only invited her daughter to the party to do all the work while she plays the queen. 
When Azer had told Marita he needed to go to Berlin to discuss Eric's serious condition with the neurology professor Nando Ponset, she had offered him her ticket and even gave him her apartment keys. Topaz packed her bags and accompanied Azer to the airport, hoping to snag a last-minute ticket. She continued, Marita had two conditions when she heard I was joining you in Berlin. First, I can't snoop around and read her diary. After a pause, Azer asked, what was the second condition? Topaz replied, she warned us about the thin walls in Berlin for historical reasons. So, no loud intimacy in her place. She added, Marita had seen a documentary about Australian girls liking intense intimacy, which I can't completely deny. Azer said, it might be one of the few interesting things about Australia, considering the long list of not-so-fun facts like poisonous snakes and spiders.